This is the dog model using our clinical device I showed you earlier. This is the control right now, has about two to three layers of photoreceptors, but in the treated right now, has about five to six layers. This is the dose response of photoreceptor preservation in RCD1 dogs. As you can see, by increasing CNTF levels, there is a progressive increase in protection in this model. And this is in a normal rabbit model showing CNTF was able to increase the thickness of the retina, and then primarily that increase is in the nuclear layer of photoreceptors. So um, is there a way to dim the light here? Uh, this is a result showing uh, control versus CNTF of a cone photoreceptor on the retina. As you can see, CNTF treated retina had a higher density of cone photoreceptors. This PBS control retina without CNTF had a progressively enlarged of area absence of photoreceptors. So this result shows that the earlier the treatment with the CNTF, the better the protection and efficacy. The basic message is, if it's too late during the treatment, if photoreceptors already lost completely, it will be very difficult for CTF to bring back the dead photoreceptors. So this is to show that quantitatively, treating with the CTF increases the cone photoreceptors. And this is to show the functional improvement in CNTF treated retina versus the control retina. So with that as a background, I'm going to just give you an update of the clinical development status of the CNTF product. So at this point, we have completed a phase one study in RP patients. We've uh, completed a phase two early stage RP study and a late stage RP study. We completed a phase two GA study, which is a, a drug of atrophy associated with a dry AMD. We are just about to begin enrollment in a phase one, um, we just completed enrollment for phase one McTell study. The study is ongoing, and we're preparing for the phase two McTell study now. And we just begin enrollment for phase one acromtopsia study. So as you can see, it's, uh, a lot of activities are going on. It's a very exciting time for us. Just to give you a summary of the key findings from our RP and GA study, that uh, CNTF um, was able, uh, able to be delivered by the ECT technology consistently over a 24-month period has been shown to be safe and well tolerated. Statistically significant and dose dependent increase in retinal thickness was observed in the three phase two studies, including GA and RP studies. And this increase is primarily within the outer nuclear layer of photoreceptors. Statistically significant cone photoreceptor preservation was demonstrated in RP patients, which was consistent with our observation in the animal studies. There is a strong trend in visual acuity preservation in the GA study, especially in patients with a baseline visual acuity at a 2063 or better. And we did now see a visual functional change in the RP patients, we believe primarily because the study duration is too short, because our primary endpoint is set at 12 months, and within the 12 months, neither the control eye or treated eye showed a change in visual function for the RP patients. So this is to show you the long-term delivery and the cell viability of the implant. 
So you can see the pre-implant, six month, 12 month, 18 month, and 12 month post-implant capsule were presented here. The uh, capsule is full of high density viable cells from wall to wall. You could not really tell the difference between the pre-implant capsule versus post-explant capsule because they all look very, very good in terms of viability. How does this translate into the kinetics of the delivery? You can see that the CNTF output by the capsule after various time of implantation basically showed consistent level of CNTF output which corresponding a consistent level of a vitreous level. And I'm, I'm happy to inform you that this vitreous level showed protective efficacy in comfort receptors in the patients who receive this capsule. So not only we show consistent delivery, we show a relevant in terms of effectiveness of a delivery. So some of the key results from our phase two studies, and this is just to show you the summary of a writing that's pigmentosa. I think it's a very uh, well-informed audience. I don't have to uh, describe this disease to all of you. And in this case, uh, we have published our observation from our phase two study in a journal called ILVS. So basically, we're able to demonstrate the protective effect of a CNTF in our RP patients. So this is to show you one of our patient. Uh, the upper panel is a sham treated control eye. The lower panel is a CNTF treated eye and showing the um, receptor um, density change in the control eye versus lack of receptor density change in CNTF treated eye. So for example, this is a baseline density for comfort receptors in a sham treated eye. 21 months later, 35 months later, if you counted the density in this case, there is a 20% drop in comfort receptors from baseline. In contrast, in the CTF treated eyes, this is the baseline, 15 months later and 35 months later, and then when you count for the receptor density, and there is no change from the baseline. So this is the first time such preservation has been demonstrated in human patients. This is very exciting for us. To summarize all the patient's data in one slide, as you can see that the blue line representing the CTF treated uh, uh, right now, the red line representing the sham control eye, there is a tendency for the CTR treated eye to maintain comfort receptor density while the sham treated eye had a progressive uh, decrease in cone density, showing loss of comfort receptors. The next disease we're treating is geographic atrophy associated with a dry AMD. So in this case, the uh, paper has been published, uh, the results published in PNS. In this uh, study, we show a increase in retinal thickness in CTF treated eye, and then also the increase is primarily in the photoreceptor outer nuclear layer, and this increase is associated with the stabilization of a CNTF treated eye compared to the control eye, which had a progressive decrease in visual acuity. If you look at a patient with a baseline visual acuity 20, 63 or better, the treated eye had consistent, stable visual acuity the control and shemai showing a progressive loss of a visual acuity. So this is consistent with the structural change that we have seen in terms of a comfort receptor preservation in the CTI treated eye. 
when you look at the average visual acuity, the treated eye at a average of a 0.8 letter increase at the end of the study, which is 12 months. In contrast, the control eye had an average of a loss of 9.7 letters in the sham eye. So in total, that to summarize, the CNTF treated eye stabilized the vision while the control eye lost vision. So this are a quite exciting study from our phase two. And then moving forward, we have started two orphan indications. One is called macular telangiectasia. As I mentioned, that we completed enrollment for phase one, and we are actively preparing for phase two for this indication. There is, this is just to give you an idea where we are in terms of status. So the phase one had seven patients. Our phase two were planning for 64 patients. Next orphan indication is called achromatopsia. We have some very exciting results in collaboration with the University of Pennsylvania showing CNTF was able to restore vision in dog model of achromatopsia. Based on that information, we're starting a study in five patients of phase one, two study of this indication. It's a orphan disease as well. So this is just to show you where we are in terms of the study. Now, just to summarize all of this together, that we are now focusing on the orphan indication with both FDA and EMA. We begin discussion of the endpoint study design with FDA. We also begin discussion with the EMA and hope to come to Europe for the MACTEL and Contopsia as well. And we're proposing the structural endpoint for RP and also for MACTEL. For Contopsia, that will be a functional endpoint. And then we are in the process of establishing a structural and function correlates for natural history studies for both the MACTEL indication as well as for RP retinescent pigmentosa. For that, I would like to thank you for